everyone, and welcome to another exciting edition of Training Unleash. Today, it's going to be great because we're going to be talking about mindset. You know, mindset's a buzzword, but I think it is such a powerful thing. It's, it's something that people need to really incorporate to create effectiveness. And today we have a true expert in, in mindset, Carissa Finley. I've known her for five or six years. She's dynamite. You're going to get tons and tons of tips and ideas from this. So Carissa, let's just start off and tell us what in the world does mindset really mean? <laughs> That's a really great question. And I think a good one to start with, Evan. So for me, mindset is really how you approach any activity throughout the day, even your day, it really is being mindful of your presence, your thoughts, and directing them in a way that helps you achieve a greater success. So a lot of people are sitting here saying, that's great. <laughs> but how do you do that? Absolutely. How do you, so what are some tips on how to, how to actually do it? So one of the things that I, I've been personally working on is just my own development journey in this. For me, I became very aware, probably around the time I started to work with you, Evan, five, six years ago, you know, it was just really, I felt like I was a product of what the world was giving to me instead of the other way around. Me being intentional about, intentional about what I wanted to create with my life. Um, so I kind of just felt like a boat being tossed around without any real direction that I was aiming for. So for me, that's when I started to dig really deep into just visualization, manifesting, meditation, and even just something as simple as thinking about the things that I needed to accomplish today and how I wanted to show up for them. How did I want my energy to be in some of the meetings that I was having? How did I want to treat the people that I was interacting with? So I've gone on this journey of really exploring a lot of different things, a lot of different meditation techniques and kind of just seeing what felt most kind of natural for me, but really also gave me the most benefit. So as I was starting to think about like, okay, this is great. I've seen some really, really good success in implementing some of these things into my life. I got really intentional about what I wanted my life to look like. And then I, you so know. So if I'm going to summarize what you're saying, you start with vision. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You start with the end in mind. What do you want to accomplish? thinking about that at the beginning of the day, but, but even bigger, thinking about it for your life. Yeah. Then yeah. thinking about it for the day. Yeah, absolutely. Start with that grand vision of yourself. And so one of, the, one of my favorite meditation practices that I did comes from Gabrielle Bernstein, and she does this med guided meditation on what does a perfect day look like for you? Because I think so many people, they don't really necessarily know mm -hmm you know, what, what's my purpose? They're still searching for that. And how do I serve the world on like a big level? So for me, this idea of like, okay, what does a perfect day look like for me? How do I spend my time? What am I doing? And so for me, when I started to practice that meditation, I saw myself giving to the world through public speaking and through education on mindset and meditation. And so when, once I had that vision of like, okay, here's how I want to spend my time and here's what energizes me, then I was able to kind of reverse engineer that and go, okay, what are the steps I need to do to get to that perfect day? Nice. Okay. So let's just take this morning. Mm -hmm. What did you do this morning to put yourself in that mindset? Yes. I am such an advocate of how you start your day is how you live your day. So starting my day really intentionally. I am an early riser. I also go to bed really early as well too. But you I know, do the opposite by the way. <laughs> and that's okay. It's like whatever. I, I, I'm on Colorado time. You're, yeah. you're, she, lives, yeah. she lives in Colorado. <laughs> yes. So I like to wake up early. I'm a, like a five, five thirty AM riser. I love to get up and exercise. Um, then when I come home, I do a meditation. I have my coffee. I take that time to just relax. Um, as I'm getting ready, I usually listen to affirmations or some sort of inspirational audiobook or something just to kind of get my mind in the right place. But like, I don't check emails. I don't check voicemails. I don't log in and start thinking about work, the morning is really sacred for me. Because if I start my day intentional about how I want to feel for the day, 
then I'm able to then get to work and have the kind of energy and presence and attitude that I need to be effective in helping others. How much time does that take? You know, it takes me really only about two hours start to finish. So that includes, I'm, I'm a big fan of group exercise. I will not work out by myself in a gym or at my house. So I, that's even travel time to go do a yoga class or go do a Pilates class or spin or something like that. So it really doesn't take that long, but I do think when people start to um, think about but that that includes your normal shower and getting oh, dressed sure. and all that yeah, yeah. ready make my coffee yes absolutely um but i do think that's one of the things that people think about is is like oh great i need how much extra time in the morning i'm rushing i'm going and so that's how i intentionally plan my day is i wake up early and yeah guess what evan it's hard in the beginning to get yeah. up and there's days i still don't want to get up but i just focus on how i know i'm going to feel once I've up, once I've got that endorphin rush and I feel good and you know, that's what you have to focus on. And, and you get to the point where you just have the discipline and it becomes a habit. And now on the weekends, I'm up without an alarm at 5.30 a.m. You know, it just becomes habit. So let's talk about results. Yeah. So you're investing extra time. So as you define it, I would say it's like an extra hour of the day. Yeah. Meanwhile, you're getting a workout, which is important, or you're doing yoga, which is important. So it's really not extra time. It's just how you're using your time, probably. But let's just talk about how does that change your day? What was your day like before and your day like after you put this dedication into mindset? Yeah, that that was really, for me, like the, the catalyst for going like, oh, wow, this is really, really important. And I need to share this with other people. Because you know, when I really dove into this practice, I was living in South Florida and I just remember, you know, I'd get up, kind of roll over, grab my phone, start checking my emails. I was listening to the local news and, you know, of all the drama that's happening. And I just, I always remember that feeling of like getting dressed and opening my door and immediately getting hit with this like wall of humidity, <laughs> you know, that's <laughs> South Florida humidity. And immediately I was in a bad mood, right? Like just immediately I was already sweating and I was hot. And then I was just, you know, mad at traffic. And, you know, so I found that really my mindset just throughout the day, like I just wasn't productive. I, I had a really short temper. Um, I didn't have time. I didn't have the energy to like really be be creative in meetings. I mean, you know that feeling where you're just yeah. like, you're just mentally drained. I can't solve a problem right now. I'm just too exhausted. I'm angry. I'm <laughs> frustrated. And so when I started to make that shift for myself, like I started to just think about, you know, how, how do I want to show up for today? And what do I want that energy to be like? And so when I started doing something as simple as shifting my my exercise from lunchtime or the evening to the morning, like my energy went way up throughout the day. I found that on top of that, I wanted to start eating healthier foods, which also contributes to your energy throughout the day. You feel different when you've had a salad versus a burrito. Um, so it really helped me just, I was, I found that when I was in meetings, I was able to problem solve quicker. I was able to like, my brain was more creative. Um, I was able to just kind of find like the good in things and in people and in interactions versus immediately jumping to any sort of negativity or challenge and just getting stuck there, you know? Yeah. So let's talk about meditation for a second. Yeah. Because a lot of people hear meditation and they don't, I don't really, I know what meditation is, but I really have no idea. So maybe tips on how to meditate. Yeah, I think that's a really great point. I have so many people that, you know, just like you said, they want to get into meditation, but they have this idea in their mind of what does meditation look like? And it's like this perfect little sacred room with a meditation pillow and music and, you know, eucalyptus in the air. And they think it needs you know, 30 minutes, 25 minutes, an hour of time to sit in stillness where you have no thoughts, right? And so a lot of people I think now have tried to dabble in meditation, but when they realize, 
I can't, I can't shut my thoughts off. I'm no good at this. They get frustrated with it. I don't have the right equipment. I can't find the song that I like. You know, they just throw their hands up and they just give up. So for me, I started off and one of my tips for meditation is start with a shorter time. Even five minutes, Evan, will help you develop the practice that you need. And the thing that I want people to know about meditation is, is that it's not something that you get good at. Like you get good at how you show up for other people and how you live your life. Like that is meditation is a tool for that. It's not something that you have to have this discipline and perform and get to the point where you're at 28 minutes without a single thought passing through your mind. That is not what meditation is. Your thoughts will always be there and that is okay. But I think too, it's like if people understood that they could just sit for five minutes and just breathe, let thoughts come and go, but detach from them. There's even really great, um, you know, like visualization meditations. Even if I just have five minutes to sit and think about, okay, what are the three things that I know are going to be a challenge for me today? And how do I want to approach them? Five minutes. I mean, you find that lift in your spirit and your focus and your creativity that you would not get if you just rushed into the car and grabbed the kids and went through McDonald's drive through in the morning. So that's what I think about meditation is, is that let go of the idea of what you think it should look like and what perfect meditation is. Start with a small increment of time. Don't try to block out 45 minutes for this discipline in the beginning and know that you're going to have to explore. I use anywhere from three to five different types of meditation practices, depending on how I feel that day. Some days I'm kind of like a little disconnected and I just need to think about the things that I'm grateful for. And that's my meditation for 12 or 13 minutes because that's the time that I have. But those little shifts in your day really have big positive effects. You just have to say, look, this is something that is worth it to me and I will make time to make this a priority. So just for the people that are really novice, what's good starter music for meditation? Or do you, you know, need music? You, you don't need music. Some people like it. And I know everybody kind of has their personal preference. Um, I use some that have like some so Sanskrit mantras that are kind of being chanted. I just find those like the most relaxing for me. Some people like thunderstorms. Some people like jazz. It really is just your personal preference. But even if sometimes it's just no music, you can listen. I mean, listening to the birds, listening to the sound of the breeze through the trees is like really beautiful that a lot of times we're just disconnected to. So there's a term, and we have not discussed this in advance. So I don't know how you're going to react to this question, but it's doing versus being. And could you talk into that or am I catching you totally off guard? No, I'd love to talk about it. <laughs> okay. I think, I think, you know, a lot of people live their life of doing, you know, I need to um, do this, you know, chore around the house. I need to do this activity before I go to work. I need to do this, you know, during a meeting, I need to do this to get prepared for this kind of budget, you know, event that I've got coming up. And so I think people get so focused on the action and the future and the results that they're not connected to just the being and the presence of the moment, right? Like you live so future focused. And for a lot of us past focus, what happened yesterday or who said that, that really caused this reaction that we don't just be in the moment. Um, so for me, it really is a lot of, a lot of what I do I do better when I come from a sense of how do I want to be and what is my true essence and what is my being and how am I showing up mindfully to the activities, to the things that I have to do. So I let the being be the, the force that I do things from. I like to use the term doing is from your head, being is from your heart. Absolutely. And when you're in committed action towards your vision, your 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 being but when you're just in activities you're just doing Absolutely. and that's the power of mindset is to have a plan for the day to see visualize uh and then you can live in the being 
and uh, it's a great, much greater day. Yeah, I agree with you. Okay, so have you ever heard of the term minimum viable product? This no. is a te- this is a technology term. <laughs> Okay, where if you're going to build a new piece of software, you start with the minimum viable product, that kind of shows it off, and then you grow it. So when our listeners are listening to you and you discuss what your day is like, that is someone who spent three, three, five, six years dedicated to doing this. What would you say if somebody was to do mindset, what their morning would look like in that minimal viable product, the yeah. least that they could do but actually have real impact. Yeah. I think what I would recommend Evan is, is that they sit down for five minutes, plan five minutes, close your eyes, get somewhere where there's quiet um, and think about, you know, what, what brings me joy, right? Like what kind of lights my heart on fire and get in that place of just connection to love right? And then from that space, just say, okay, what, what does my day look like? And what kind of person do I want to be for these events that I know I have on my calendar? And just thinking through that, visualizing what, you know, I I know I've got this meeting that's going to be a little stressful with my supervisor. How do I want to be? So even, I mean, Evan, you know this, I think about like, if I've got a training for the week and I think about like, I see the faces of the attendees in my training and they've got smiles on their faces and they're writing notes and they're talking and they're asking questions because that's the kind of dynamic that I want to create for that environment. So I think through it. I visualize how I want my day to go and that can take five, seven, 10 minutes. I think what the great thing is, is, is that a lot of people will have that, you know, worry or concern about how much time is this going to take but i don't know if you're like me evan it's like okay i only have five minutes and then the next thing i know i'm like seven eight nine ten minutes in because i just enjoy it so much and you start to realize like this is this is time that needs to take priority in my life i like to think of my day as a theme Mm. and um i definitely practice you know ways of being uh, but i actually do it all the day so like before this uh, recording, I sat back and said to myself, I want to be someone that will make my guests be comfortable, someone that will make it easy, that will have a smooth conversation. Uh, So I want to be loving, caring, curious. Uh, Those are my ways of being. And then there are different times, like if I'm going into a meeting to negotiate something, I'm going to have totally different ways of being. And I'll, well, I use the term style flex throughout the whole day. Is, is that something you practice too in some way or? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, first off, bravo, because you have been that loving, kind, generous person uh, that's made the conversation go really easy. But yeah, absolutely. You've got to flex. Like there's times where I know I need to be kind of the confident authority in leading a conversation. So I need to show up with a different sort of presence than if maybe I'm meeting with, you know, um, someone who really just needs a little bit of counsel from me or who wants me to be a creative problem solver. Um, And so a space where I really need to step back and just be curious, right? Versus being the authority and, and, and leading from that place. So yeah, absolutely. That's a really great point. Yeah, I think this concept is something I hope the listeners are listening to. I think most people go through their lives being one way. Mm, yeah. And and for some people, like when you say, okay, I, I've got to be, you know, more authoritative and more and more controlling in the conversation because that's what the need is, they don't know how to do that. So I know that you're a transformational trainer too. And let's shift gears if we could to that. Mm-hmm. And what does that mean? I think that was a really great introduction to that because I think a lot of people have kind of these preconceived ideas of how they need to be. And if you dive even deeper to that, people have stories that they tell themselves that they repeat on a loop for years and decades, Evan. And those thoughts and those stories 
ultimately determine the course that they, their life takes, right? So they make choices based on these stories that have formed, you know, from childhood. And so, you know, a lot of my work is done with entrepreneurs. And what I think is so incredible about like that group is they've, they've taken a risk and they've said, Hey, I've got something that I think really could benefit the world. And they get really excited in that beginning phase of being an entrepreneur. And it's so exciting when they get to design their logo and sign the lease and look for the space. Right. But yeah. then you look at them in their journey a year later, five years later, 10 years later, and you start to see how some of the stories that they've been telling themselves has ultimately got them to a place of, to be honest, probably ordinary results, right? Like yeah. they have this grand vision for what they wanted this business to be like. And when you're working with an entrepreneur who's freaking tired of the daily grind six years in and is not making the money that they want to make. I think you know this from training, Evan. It's so easy to give someone best practices. Here's a way that you could run a report that's going to show you where this gap in your efficiency is, <laughs> right? Yeah. And, and I'm sure as you know this, it's like, okay, great. You give them that piece of information and they never do anything with it. So then you have to step back and go, okay, so you're not doing it. We all know kind of what we need to do. They wouldn't have gotten to the point of opening a business if they didn't know what they needed to do. But a lot of time, these beliefs and these stories that they have about themselves are ultimately what's holding them back. Their beliefs around money, around success, whether that's good or bad or what they've been taught, right, from childhood or just little stories yeah. that they picked up from their environment decades ago are influencing the decisions that they're making on a daily basis. And they're so disconnected from that. That is really unconscious thoughts and behaviors that are leading to the conscious decisions that they're making. So that's that really... For me, I think it's some of the, the pivotal differences in really transformational training is, is that like, yeah, I can teach you what to do and how to do it all day long. But if you don't tap into the inner beliefs that you have about yourself and going back to mindset, if you're not showing up with an idea of what success looks like for you, if you don't have a really clear picture of what you're aiming for, and then understanding and being aware of when you deviate from those, those choices that are going to lead you to that, then you've got to go on an inner journey, right? Like an inner exploration. And I think, you know, the great thing is, is that like our society is, is now kind of wrapping their arms around some of these techniques. And you hear things like visualization and meditation and mindfulness being talked more and more about in the business world, because ultimately it is the difference between just getting ordinary results versus extraordinary results is knowing where you want to go, having a plan to get there and being able to put that mirror up to your face, to yourself and really examine the story because your business as an entrepreneur will never be greater than you. Right? Yeah. Like you are the leader, you are the driver, like your team is not going to work harder on the business than you are. So you have got to find out how do you show up as your best to build an extraordinary business. And, and a less and less of that, Evan, as you know, is about reports that you need to run and networking opportunities. It's like really examining what's holding you back from that extraordinary journey. Yeah. It's interesting that you say this because for years, I used to believe that once someone was 30, it was over, that their beliefs were locked and that you couldn't change them. Under 30, there was hope. Mm -hmm. And the, this belief led me to lots of hiring decisions, lots of, you know, leaving people pigeonholed and jobs and things like that until I started to understand transformational training I started send, actually sending people to transformational training and realizing you can actually release yourself from these negative thoughts that hold you. Um, so I know that we're not going to release people of negative thoughts on this, on, <laughs> on this podcast, but um, just describe a little bit how you work with clients that, that are looking for transformational training. Yeah. I think one of the things that I've been on with this journey is, 
you know, I used, or I, and I still do to, to a certain extent, like sales training, right? Like how do you go out there and you, you teach someone the assumptive clothes and you teach them the language, you let them see it, you let them role play it, you let them analyze it, you know, you glow through Bloom's taxonomy of adult learning, right? And like, yeah. how do you effectively perform a sales close? Uh, but what I've really started to discover is, is that, you know, if you don't overcome those limiting beliefs around rejection, like you can know how to close assumptively all day long, but there's going to be a deeper fear inside of you that stops you from even saying the words or asking the questions that are needed. So, you know, as someone who's starting to kind of work on this journey, so much of what I do now with trainings is I have people really map out, like, what does success look like for you? Like that is step one, because None of the other what and how and technical trainings really work if you don't have a clear vision of what do you want the end result to be, right? So, so many people that I work with, you know, what, what's your goal for membership growth that you'd like to have or revenue growth? Evan, they don't know. Right? They're yeah, like, no, I totally better agree. than yesterday, you know? So it's like, okay, yeah, absolutely. Let's reverse engineer that and let's start to work on like a smart goal. But then it's like, okay, people understand generally like, all right, I need to pinpoint and get my goal and make sure it's specific and measurable, et cetera. But then you have to kind of go on that journey of what are you going to do when you get off course? What are you going to do when you don't hit this goal or when you're not trending mid month? to hit that goal because you're going to hit obstacles. The second you start to tell like everybody what you want to do, the universe or whatever you believe in is going to go, Oh really? Like here's a little test. Let's see. Um, so you're always going to over, you're always going to hit those obstacles and roadblocks, but really, and a lot of times those obstacles and roadblocks are those stories, right? Evan, that you've been telling yourself sure. around money and I'm not worth this. And people like, I don't, what I have to say isn't important for people. No one cares about what I have to say. Who are you? So then you've got to really start to use those tools. And the great thing is, is like there, there's a lot of tools that are, you could build your own toolkit from some people. If you'd like to see visualizations, do that. If you like the meditation, do that. If you just start your day with some movement and some exercise, do that. You can build your toolkit that helps you understand that when I hit a roadblock or an obstacle, I know that I can overcome this kind of fear or anxiety using these tools. So that's what I so think. You're building is. muscle. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, we are what we repeatedly do. And guess yeah. what? If you are repeatedly the type of person who runs from a challenge you're yeah. just going to keep running. If you get hit with stress and it's fight or flight and you consistently choose to just leave or escape the situation, like that is what you're going to repeatedly do. But the, the cool thing is, is like, there's a ton of really great research. Like you were saying, Evan, that like new neural pathways can be formed at any age, right? Yeah. So you're, you're not dead in the water at 30. You can learn these new ways and your brain will start to fire and trigger in new ways that helps you develop new patterns so that when you hit these obstacles, you're not constantly in a state of flight. You learn how to deal with the stress. You learn how to work through the problems and things like meditation really can help you become better. Science shows at problem solving and at being creative. Whereas without that practice, you might just give up and say, uh, you know what? I was right. I'm not worth it. I don't need, I shouldn't have that much money. Money's bad. Um, so it really, it helps you kind of just with that daily practice of, of building the, the brain's new response to challenges. So we're going to, we're about to run out of time, but people need to understand how they can work with you. What do you do? How could, you know, how could people, people loving what they're hearing, but want support? Cause I, I think most people listening are going right on, makes <laughs> sense, makes sense, makes sense. Love help. Yeah. Help okay. me where. <laughs> right. So what is your, you know, one of the, I know, I know you're an international professional speaker. Uh, I know you're a mindfulness coach. How do people, how do people work with you? 
Yeah. So I would recommend like people go to my website, carissafinley.com. Um, and I start, one of the resources that I have for everyone is a guided a visualization meditation that you can download. This is your gift, correct? Yes. This is my gift. This <laughs> yes. is my gift to you. Um, a guided visualization meditation that I really like um, and that I use a lot. And then I also work with groups through helping them kind of implement. I have a three-step formula that kind of breaks down how do I need to start my day? What do I need to stop and how do I need to reflect? And then where do I need to grow from here? So I love to share that with groups through public speaking and consulting. So all of that information is found on my website. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. What's the website again? So people. CarissaFinley.com. And you spell Carissa with a K or a C? I spell it with a C. It's spelled like this. C-A-R-I-S-A-F-I-N-D-L-E-Y at CarissaFinley.com. <laughs> you, know, you could also email me too. <laughs> you know, I don't know if you ever thought about your name, but it's sort of like find Lee. So yeah. find you at carissafinley.com. Yeah. There we go. That'll be my new tagline. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, uh, we always end with, if you have one tip to share, what would that one tip be? That one tip for me would be, you know, plan five minutes in the morning where you close your eyes, you sit, you find some stillness and you look at the day ahead and you connect to how do I want to feel throughout the day? How do I want to feel in these meetings and these interactions and this you know, carpool line? Um, and just start to get intentional about how you want to show up for your life. And that can start with five minutes of just visualizing how you want the day to go. That is a fantastic tip. That is where everyone gets to start. Um, you've been a fantastic guest. I've learned a lot. I want to thank the listeners for being on. I appreciate the listeners a lot. <laughs> appreciate you a lot. Everyone have a great day.